All right, hello, thank you and uh, welcome and thank you for joining this webinar. Today we are going to discuss the 2019 India birthday trip with Dr. Pillai. Now, many of you are probably expecting Dr. Pillai to be here today. Unfortunately, he has been traveling and was very tired and a little bit under the weather, so he was not, he's not able to join. So we're very sorry about that. However, he did record a beautiful video just a few days ago about the trip and the locations we're going to, so we will uh, send you that. And we have with us Maya, who is one of Dr. Pillai's longest uh, standing students, been around for many years, and has traveled, did have the blessing to travel with him on a small trip to the locations that were selected for this um, birthday trip. Now, also, as many of you may know, there was going to be a trip without Dr. Pillai on it in 2019. That was the original plan. And then he was inspired to go to uh, take a few people to this very, uh, to these sacred locations. And when he came back and true the most generous guru nature wanted to take everyone with him there because it was just so powerful. So an understanding of what it's like to be there. I haven't personally been there, so I'm excited to hear about it as well. Welcome, Maya. Hi, everyone. Hi, Diada. Hello. Um, it, it, it's, uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. So it's exactly what you said. Dr. Play had no intention of holding another birthday trip. He keeps saying that he's retired. He wants to work on some deeper meditations for the world and transform humanity. But he gets the calling to um, these sacred spots <laughs> that are so incredibly powerful, um, limited access. These aren't, these aren't easy to access uh, locations. And once he's there, he sees the transformation in, um, in all the people he's brought there and the power of that spot. And he's like, I'm gonna share this with everybody. And even though the journey is gonna be a little arduous, this is a pilgrimage, this is not a vacation. <laughs> it's gonna be worth it. It's one of the most um, reverential sites that I've ever experienced with Dr. Pillai. And I'm gonna kind of go through that journey with you. So really what we're talking about is um, an investment in yourself. You know, the concept of pilgrimage hasn't, um, really been popularized in the West. There's not many places you can you know, go on a pilgrimage to. There's Mecca, there's Israel, but in India, um, there's an ancient tradition that you would go and visit these holy sites of the gods and vortexes. And when you go, that deity would bless you, empower you, you would vibrate with them. Sometimes they would come directly out of the statues and talk to you. But there's always a communication and a consent from the deity for you to be there, meaning that you're about to have a major change in your life. So what I want to do is I put together a little um, presentation here, uh, a PowerPoint, <laughs> um, to kind of walk you through the first part of the trip um, that Dr. Pillai uh, revealed recently with all the mystical spots. So um, just to kind of put it in perspective, he's never, he's never done a trip like this before. And we're covering a lot of territory. <laughs> Thank God for modern transportation because in your lifetime, you would never be able to do this on foot. This would be like a once in a lifetime journey. Um, oh, this is great that you have the map so we can really see <laughs> the extensive <laughs> yes. nature of our journey. Modern this technology is has six days. made it possible. <laughs> yes, yes. So. Um, so I'm going to walk you through each little leg here. So on this trip, in, in the past, we've mostly been in the south of India and Kerala, which are, it's called the temple territory of India. It's the most sacred, intact uh, locations. But there are mystical power spots north of there as well. And um, this trip begins in a town called Hyderabad. And uh, that's where you would fly into and out of. And from Hyderabad, once you arrive, we're going to catch a flight first on route number one, which is down here to the Udupi Kolor area. The airport there is called Mangalore, but not really important. And um, the first two places is where Dr. Pillai selected as the most powerful to spend his birthday with you and to give you that optimal blessings. 
So the first stop, um, I believe the first day or two might be reversed, but right now it's in a place called Udupi. And some of you might be familiar with Udupi. It's a temple city. Um, it's for wealth and prosperity. And it has, it's associated with uh, Krishna. Krishna, um, as a young boy, very playful and very mischievous. So it's a very joyful kind of fun location. But the power of this Udupi temple, they say, is equivalent to the abode of Lord Vishnu called Vaikunda. So to even step inside this town, your thoughts begin to change. Even though it's still a small town in India, the quality of your thoughts become more prosperous, more materialistic, but in a very um, engaging way where you want to be a part of it. And Dr. Ply has often said that, you know, this would be the location if he was ever to do a millionaire seminar for young people, he would pick Udipi. That's how crackling the energy is there for blessings of wealth. Yeah. So we get to go to Udipi. If I can say Krishna. Roughly. If yeah. I can say real quickly, um, when you and Dr. Pillai went on this trip, I told you this, Maya, um, I felt high the whole day. I wasn't even there. I didn't even know where they were. <laughs> I was just, I just felt this um, immense high the entire time just because of, you know, we all have a connection to Dr. Pillai. So, and I happen to be in India too, just not in that location. So that's how powerful it was. Like this remote transmission of this um, amazing power spot. Exactly, exactly. And just kind of the history of it too, um, I thought was interesting. So um, this is Dr. Pillai at a, another temple, but you can see this picture in the background here. This picture is of a great saint uh, named Madhva, Madhvacharya. And he was a great Vishnu devotee of the great Vishnu saints. He is the, he never died. He actually uh, ascended bodily to the abode of, uh, uh, Lord Vishnu by Kunda. And he is responsible. I believe it was in the, I don't want to get my centuries wrong, but I think it was in the 13th century for establishing this Krishna here. So he was uh, very devout to Vishnu and Krishna and was writing these um, prolific scriptural testimony to, to Krishna that are still intact today. And he was midway through writing it, and he was attracted to go to the beach area near Udupi, about four miles from the current temple. And he, he goes to the beach, and there's a ship out on the sea, and there's a, a, the wind had kicked up in the waves, so this, this boat was about to overturn and lose all the cargo. The, the men were screaming. And with his powers, he had tremendous powers, all the 64 great cities. Madhva saw this, and he just kind of and quieted the waters and then the boat kind of uprighted itself and the men were so happy that the captain said thank you so much anything you want just tell me what you want and there was a very heavy lump of golden sand on the boat and Madhva said I'll take that and so um, the captain's like whatever you like <laughs> so he takes this lump of clay carries it to him and um Madhva decides to carry it because it, it's a clay that the Vaishnavite saints would put all over their body after they bathe. It's a sacred uh, purification thing, ritual for them, but it was quite heavy. So Madhva proceeded to carry this lump of clay to um, his ashram or where he gave talks in the current place of the Udupi Krishna temple. And whenever he would put it down and his students would start to try to carry it, they could never lift it. It was so heavy. But as soon as Madhva Charya would lift it up again. It, it was no problem to carry. And midway through their journey, the clay broke into two and there was this statue. And this ship had just come from Dvarka, which is the birthplace of Lord Krishna. Dvarka is, um, if we go to the map here, it's just up here, kind of it, allegedly off the coast of like um, Pune and Mumbai, kind of up here a little bit more um, off this coast. And um, so the ship was coming from there and um, they later found out that this statue had a mystical um, a history from Krishna's wife. And I think her name is Ramuki. And she uh, had created this statue and put it in the clay during the time of Krishna himself. And then it was buried for so long and nobody knew what was in it. 
So miraculously, right when this great, very powerful Siddha master, Madhvacharya, was singing praises to Krishna, this statue appeared. So he carries it to Udupi and establishes it there. And he starts worshiping this statue 13 times a day by himself. He is so in love with this Krishna. So this Krishna is alive for him. It's speaking to him. It's doing miracles for all his devotees. And he's in there 13 times a day uh, doing the practice. And even today, uh, that is still carried on. Um, Madhvacharya um, prescribed what the heirs of the temple should do in order to propitiate the divinity of Lord Vishnu as Krishna. So anyone who steps into this vortex, as Jay Radha said, even if you join in remotely, where we hope you're there in person, it crackles. Um, it's, it's full of love and um, positive thinking. And it gives you your whole soul, body, and mind an upgrade as to what it is like to experience wealth. And you take that with you. It's not just that you visit this power spot and nothing comes of it. You actually take that with you. So this is just the first of the journey. And Dr. Ply wanted to be there around his birthday time. So the second place, let me just go, go back to this one. The second place we're going to on this map. So we're in Udupi. We're going to overnight there, and the next day we're going to drive about an hour, 45 minutes north into the hills to a small town called Kolor. And this is where Dr. Pillai has um, made arrangements to do a very powerful fire ritual there for, um, for everyone's benefit. And I'm calling this, and he called it first, the Temple for Brain Upgrades and Intelligence. And those of us who were traveling with Dr. Pillai, he said we were in need for an upgrade. <laughs> so I was very grateful to go to this temple and get an uh, upgraded brain. So um, this temple here is associated with a very powerful goddess. And she is, she's Saraswati, but she's also Parvati and Lakshmi. So she's a Trimurti goddess. Um, there are two mythologies around this temple about how it got its power. One is that there was um, a devotee of uh, Shiva and Parvati in this village. And he started to be troubled by this very clever evil spirit. So he was so frustrated that he prayed to Parvati. He's like, please, you have to help me, mother. You, know, you have to help me. This spirit, he's so clever. He's damaging everything I'm trying to do. It's, it's very, very hard to get anything done. So Parvati comes and takes away his intelligence. So he becomes the dumb, the dumb spirit, <laughs> the dumb evil spirit. And um, dumb or slow-witted in, um, in Sanskrit is actually mook. So it's mugambika, M-O-O-K means dumb or stupid. And then, so everything was kind of going well, but this spirit was still so malicious, even though he was now being a stupid spirit, he was still causing problems for her devotee. So she's like, okay. So she came and she killed the evil spirits and let him go on to his next incarnation. So this is where the goddess kills stupidity. It kills dumbness. And the other story about how it actually came into um, have the deities there was um, in the seventh century, about 600 AD, there was a great saint in India called Adi Shankara. Adi Shankara is really, um, the founding father of modern day Hinduism. What happened is after um, the Buddha came along about 300 years AD, um, and then his teachings proliferated about no soul, just meditate on emptiness. There was a big conflict that was kind of coming out through India over the next couple hundred years. People were getting confused between, is there a soul, is there not a soul? So Adi Shankar dedicated his life to kind of codifying the first set of precepts about how the soul works based, based on the ancient Vedanta and explaining also um, the Buddha's teaching and recodifying that. So um, he was a Yani yoga and he prayed to Saraswati frequently. So at one point he is traveling to Kerala, which is a state north of here. And he wants Saraswati to come with them. So he prays to her, he's like, please, Saraswati, I need you. You have to come. I'm going to be totally stupid without you. Please come, please come, please come. 
So um, she agrees. She appears before him. She's like, okay, I'm going to follow you here. But you can never doubt that I'm with you. If you doubt for one second that I'm right behind you, walking behind you and with you, I'm going to stop there and I'm not going to continue in the journey any further. So Adi Shankara was very grateful. And um, as you can imagine how the story goes, he was traveling and then all of a sudden he couldn't feel her. And he was wondering like, oh, did she leave me or what happened? She's not there. So he turns around and he sees Saraswati and it's at this location in Kolor that she stops. And so she's like, I, I'm going to reside here now uh, and bless everyone from here. And I'm no longer going to follow you to Kerala. He does plead with her to visit <laughs> um, a little bit more and she agrees. But um, for the most part, she remains here and they establish this temple with her idol here. So this temple, um, Dr. Pai is making some very special arrangements with these very um, interesting tantric priests. And we're going to do this amazing ritual here to invoke the goddess, the Trimurti goddess, the combination of um, Parvati, Lakshmi, and Saraswati, and get uh, uh, upgraded intelligence in our mind, in our thoughts. I mean, how long can we continue with the same thought forms, right? We need an intervention to give us that upgrade. It's too hard to battle this world with your own current thought system. It's just too much going on, right? And there's no support. But when you make the effort to make the pilgrimage to these holy sites, you get the upgrade, you get the connection. And to be there with Dr. Palai on his 70th birthday, when he's probably not gonna do many more trips, is just um, like walking with the footsteps of a great, great, great master. So, um, I, Jared, I'll just pause here if you have any questions, but from here we go back to hide or bed and continue on our journey. Um, do you have any comments on that, Jared? No, I just was agreeing with what you said that we don't know how much longer Dr. Ply will do, and we almost didn't do this trip, <laughs> so uh, we don't know how many trips are ahead. And this, so if you have the opportunity, if you can join um, this trip, this would be a once in a lifetime opportunity and um, we finally got all the pricing ready, actually, because we had to redo the entire trip. <laughs> for those of you who remember, um, we had the trip ready, had it open for sale, and then he changed everything. So it took us this long to actually get everything together. And we finally have a new page up with the pricing and all that. So it's on the, the page you're looking at, the viewing page. You can look, There's a button below that. You can click on it, and then you can see more details as well. And um, options for joining with trips. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, logistically it has been um, a blessing in many ways because a lot of these villages didn't have proper facilities um, for us. So you wouldn't be able to stay at a decent hotel or you wouldn't be able to eat decent food. But thanks to um, modern conveniences that we have now been able to identify proper place, places for everyone. So you'll be well cared for. And <coughs> Maya has just been traveling back to the U.S. from India and has a little bit of a cold, so we thank her for joining us, even though she's a little under the weather as well, and putting together this beautiful PowerPoint. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to be good here. <laughs> <coughs> I think it sounds worse than it is. All right, but let's get back to our mystical journey. Okay, so then we fly back to Hyderabad, which is going to be our hub. And now we're going to head to the other coast of India. And um, <coughs> this part, I highly encourage everyone not to miss. Um, you know, part of Dr. Pali's spiritual name is Dattacharya. And Lord Dattacharya um, took an incarnation many uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago where he did unbelievable miracles and magic. <coughs> Excuse me. And this next part of the trip here on the East Coast to Rajamundri and Penagunda begins that journey to tap into the power of the Trimurti God, the Brahma, the Vishnu, the Shiva. So let me just go here. So our first one begins with the goddess. Um, and look at this Homa, look at the, what they did here. The smoke in that fire ritual, the goddess appeared. 
So this is a temple um, in a place called Penagunda. And it's uh, Lord Dattacharya's feminine form. She's a combination of Saraswati, Lakshmi, and Parvati. Her name is Vasavi. She's often considered the sister of Dattacharya, but she's really part of himself. <coughs> and we're going to journey to her location, her birthplace. And the power of this goddess is unbelievable. She's so compassionate. You immediately connect with her. And she is a goddess that can obviously give you creativity, uh, success in sustaining your business and living this world, and also success in ending anything that needs to be ending. But in particular, in her incarnation here, she was born into the merchant class. So she's very, very savvy for business. So when you step into this vortex for Vasavi, you are connecting with a Trimurti goddess, which is Lord Dr. Treya himself. And she can bless you with so much uh, knowledge and prosperity and ways to do business, ways to enjoy this world, new creativity, ways to get out of sticky situations. So um, this is gonna be a really special uh, journey here. We're gonna fly from Hyderabad um, to this area. It's gonna be a day trip. So this is where the pilgrimage is gonna be really fairly intense. And one day we're going to, um, fly here from Hyderabad over to Rajamundri Airport. We're gonna drive down here to Penukunda. And um, again, there's nothing in this area really suitable for uh, a lot of us. So we were fortunate enough to find a nice place for lunch, <laughs> but we're gonna make it a very intense day trip to hit these two very, very most critical power spots for um, Dr. Treya. One is the goddess, Vasavi, and the second one, is a place called Pita Farm, which is the birthplace of Lord Dr. Treya's incarnation. He, he took a birth, um, I believe in the 13th century. His name was Sri Pada Sri Balaba. And he, from birth to the day he left the earth plane was totally all encompassing powerful. If you can read any of his stories, they are mind blowing. He was just, um, a God that could do anything incarnate. He did magic and miracles everywhere he went. Can you imagine hanging out with him and being his student during that time? So when, when, when him and his students would travel to these different temples, it was direct communication with the gods. I mean, here we are in the Kali Yuga, 7 billion people on the planet. When you make a pilgrimage to these temples, we're more inclined to see, okay, while well, they're doing mantras, holy place, it's a statue. It's not a statue. And in the stories of Lord Dr. Treya in his incarnation as Sri Pada, Sri Vallabha, they talk about how the deities would actually come out of the statue, stand in front of you and talk to you. Or the aura and energy emanating from these statues would be so powerful in the different colors and hues. So we're journeying to the, to the birthplace of Sri Pada Sri Vallabha, where he incarnated here. And so we can empower ourselves with that connection and, and deepen our capabilities to contact Lord Dr. Treya and do miracles ourselves. And I know in um, Dr. Pai's upcoming mystery school for 2019, that is a theme. He's like, it's time for everyone to learn how to do miracles. And I really feel that this trip is positioning those who have the calling and who the gods allow to come to start to access that energy. And I think we all qualify. So it's not just that the God is calling you. If you're listening to this call, the God is there making you listen to this call. It wasn't your own volition, it was a two-sided thing. So I think if you're listening to this call, you have to know that you have an invitation, you have a connection to these places. And maybe there's some practical concerns where you can't go at this time, but you have that connection or you would not um, be listening to this trip and interested in learning more about this. Yeah, because not everyone is invited. That's the other thing. Yeah. Dr. Pillai will say, you know, we're the luckiest people in the world because God is allowing us to come to these or allowing you to even watch this. It's like, you have to be invited by the beings in order to even be allowed to get to these locations physically. So it's a, it's a huge blessing. And, and if you feel like you don't have the resources at the moment, be open to miracles. We have heard people say, literally, I found Dr. Pillai on YouTube uh, and then I 
didn't, I, I knew I wanted to, had to go on this trip. Some, something crazy, you know, for them manifested and then they came. But there's been so many different stories of how miracles will happen. So just be open to God. And uh, if the calling is there, if, since it is, since you're watching this, then I'll, you know, continue on that calling and, and ask too. ask the divine beings. Okay, help me do this then. <laughs> help me, help this happen for me. Uh, let there be a miracle. Let, let something occur. Exactly. Yeah. If Lord Dr. Trey wants you there, he's all powerful and say, Lord Dr. Trey, make this happen. And sincerely pray in your heart, you know, sincerely connect with him and just say, make this happen for me. And I am sure we'll be seeing you in India. Okay. So the final place after this little journey here. Um, so we're going to go to Rajan Munji and Penakunda, and then those two other circles there on the coast. One is our lunch spot, <laughs> and one is Pita Parm, the birthplace of Lord Dattacharya. We fly back very late in the night to Hyderabad. And then on the final day of the journey of part one of the trip with Dr. Palai, we make a journey down to that final spot there, uh, number three. It's near a town called Great Chor. It is called uh, Kuruvapuram, or Guruvarpuram. You can say it with a K or a G. And this is where Lord Dattacharya, as Sri Pada Sri Vallabha uh, pretty much merged with the sun and ascended directly off of this earth plane. He never died. He just ascended directly. Um, that little boat you see there is not the boat you're going to be in. <laughs> um, we sent someone there to do some reconnaissance because you do have to take a boat to get to the temple. But we're going to hire um, a much larger boat so you'll be safe. <laughs> That's the traditional route. Um, so we're going to cross this little river, and then we come to this ascension spot of Lord Dattacharya, where he ascended to heaven. And by accessing these miraculous times, and know Dr. Pai is going to open more of these miracles and help us tap into the technology Dr. Treya left behind and how to access the goddess in Dr. Treya. This journey is going to be one that completely opens all of us to new possibilities and to access our own divinity in more powerful ways. So this is all of trip one I have. Um, uh, Jira, did you have any questions on this first part of the journey? Let me see if there's questions in our chat. You can go ahead and post them if you have any questions on this, then we'll go through quickly um, trip two. But let's see first if there are any. So Dr. Pillai, someone's asking, Dr. Pillai's birthday is February 1st. So on that day, we will be at the Mukambika temple, temple where that large special fire ritual will be, will be held. And um, for those of you who aren't able to attend, we, will, we are planning to have a short seminar that will be broadcast from the hotel there. So there'll be about a, he usually does maybe one or two hour kind of uh, trans transmission um, for those who can't attend in person. Okay, it looks like there's no questions, so we can move on to trip two. I know we want to wrap this up. Okay. We can. Um, so thank you. So uh, I'll go through some of trip two because I've been on these places. So I can speak to them and then Maya will also chime in with her experience. She's been to way more temples than I have <laughs> and probably all of these as well. So we've just been through this amazing journey with Dr. Pillai, right, on trip one. We're calling them trip one, trip two, or both. So you, you can have the opportunity to do either one of them, right, or both, which is what we will, um, uh, which is if you have the financial funds, you know, because it takes, a, you know, if you're from the West, it takes a day to travel. It's, it's great to be able to go on both. So here we go. We've just been through this amazing, uh, you know, back and forth. Also, I want to, I just want to mention that we had to reprice the whole trip, trip one. Um, and you saw how many, uh, how much traveling internal flights there are. Um, so the, the price, unfortunately, had to go up simply because we also had to pay more to get you around internal India. Um, everything is included when you get to India. So your expenses will include getting yourself to India. So flying into Hyderabad. 
then we handle all the hotels, all the internal domestic transportation, all of your meals, all of the tips at the hotel that are included in terms of your baggage or um, meals. Um, any personal items, of course, that you get to your room is your own, uh, your own, what you have to cover. But everything necessary is covered inside of the trip. And one of the reasons we do this is because in order to have a better spiritual experience, we don't want you to have to worry about the external. We take care of all of that for you. So you literally sign up, book your flight, make sure you have a visa, a passport, all of those logistical things, get your body into India, and then we take care of you the entire way. The only thing you have to do on this trip from that point forward is focus inwardly, is to take in the energy, is to let the vibrations move through you, is to have transformation. So that's why we do it, so that this, transmi this transmission can happen more easily. Your mind isn't worried about survival mode at all. We take care of that 100%. So I wanted to put that out there as well. Okay, so now that we've been through this amazing few days, and so you understand, um, I'm just looking at my notes for the, the days of the trip. We've now been through six days, which includes your arrival. So January 30th was your arrival. Now it's February 4th, where we stopped at the Dachatreya Ascension. Uh, which is day six. Then we move into the first day of trip one or the seventh day of the full trip. And here we go to Trichendor, which now we're back down south. I, we, I don't have the map <laughs> that Maya has, but now we're like pretty much uh, further down south in India. So we're going to travel quite, quite a bit. Trichendor is the one of the six main temples for Muruga. And if you were, if you heard about the temples during Dr. Pillai's um, Muruga Immersion Program or Skanda Shasti this year, you know that it's associated with the second chakra. And Dr. Pillai has said that it's, the second chakra is so important to have healed or have under control because it has a lot to do with our survival, with sexual urges, with um, distractions, with survival mode. And when we can get beyond that, then the energy can move up into stages of enlightenment to have um, spiritual experiences. So this temple is a really powerful place to remove your karma. I went there, it's immense. Um, you first go to the beach. It is said that um, the waters turn red at a certain time of the year. It signifies where Maruga killed a, um, a uh, major demon. And so by going there, you're literally killing the inner demons, literally killing the karma that is holding you back. Uh, you may know that Ply Center and Astroved have a very powerful um, ceremony that we get performed there when you order certain remedies. So it's, it's known as a place that removes very stubborn karma. So we first go to Muruga, um, and then we go to Tirupati. One of my favorite places, Navatirapati, because it is the place where uh, nine different Vishnu temples are. They're very small, very humble temples. Dr. Pillai loves them, though. He always sends people there. He says it's the place for concentrated millionaire and billionaire energy. And um, we'll be going to all nine of them. Each one of these temples is also associated with a planet. So you're receiving the blessings of both Vishnu, who is the sustainer, the wealth giver, um, the one who allows us to have uh, protection, uh, beautiful things, everything that sustains our life in the earth plane, as well as each of the nine planets, which control our thoughts, gives us destiny. So um, we'll be going through Navatirapati. Then we'll move on to uh, February 7th, we'll move on to Vishwamitra's temple. Now, I have to tell you a personal story about this because I think it was M March. Um, I went on this trip and I did um, a lot of what we're going to do in trip two. Went to the Murga temple, then went to all the Navatirapati temples. And I was in the area and I said to Dr. Play, it's like, well, I really want to go to the Vishwamitra temple. So, no, you don't have to go. In fact, he said, don't go. And I, but I didn't listen. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be, because like it's three hours away, you don't have to go. And I didn't, I didn't listen to him. So I was like, I'm going to this temple. So um, just so happened, the person I was traveling with that morning was ill. So it was just me and the guide um, and the camera crew. Actually, there's a video about it. We, I was late that morning getting to the car. 
Uh, but everything happened so perfect. It was like the perfect invitation from Vishwamitra. We drive there, we arrive exactly at 10 a.m. This, it's a, literally a hut. And if you see the video about it, it's, you'll see it's very, very humble. Like it's literally a hut. <laughs> and it's where he sat and meditated for such a long period of time. I don't know if that's the exact location where he meditated for 1500 years to receive Brizi, but it is definitely one of his main meditation spots. And there is a temple nearby where he meditated on um, Lord Shiva and did puja to the Shiva Lingam. So we go to both of those temples, but his is just this little tiny place. So we arrive at 10 a.m. and here's this young priest just doing his daily work and not expecting anyone to show up. And he's about to do this Abhishekam, which is a sacred hydration. So we're like, oh my gosh, we get to watch, we get to watch this. I walked into the shrine and it is this condensed energy of compassion. It is so thick. I literally walked in there, my heart opened, I started weeping because it, it was just so, there was just, there was just so much love. It was like this pure heart space. And then I didn't even know this at the time, but I, I remembered um, Dr. Pillai had said in one of his videos that Vishwamitra was, is the most compassionate being on the planet. And you can feel it, it's visceral. Um, so anyway, we sat there. I sat down in front. It's so tiny. You can, you're literally just a few feet from the, the statue. And I just wept because it was, it was just so beautiful and so immense. And, and then they finished doing all the puja and all this stuff. And then um, afterwards, they, like, once they dress him back up, they open up the, the screen so you can see him again. And the cameraman goes, ma'am, ma'am, look, it's a uh, water. <laughs> and so what had happened was when they were cleaning him up and everything, the priest sprinkles water around as a final blessing. And there was an exact um, drip, drip of water from his eye down his cheek. And we actually have a picture of it. And it was this beautiful, like his tear of a compassion as well for all of humanity. Because when I was sitting there, I was praying for him to please help everyone. Like please through Brazil, please through his powers, like help this earth where we are so trapped in our, our poverty consciousness, our poverty and scarcity uh, mentalities that we can't get out of. I was just praying, please help this world. We're, we're, we're suffering. And um, so it was just this beautiful experience. So I was, um, <laughs> so I was the one who was um, making sure we get to Vishwamitra this year <laughs> so that you can experience this as well. And if all works out, we're going to have a fire ritual right there in front of his shrine as well. So I, I, we have to make sure that's all, that can all happen, but that's the intention. So that's the Vishnu Mitra Temple. And of, and of course, um, Shreem Burzi is as what he's given us. He's given us the Burzi mantra. Then we travel down to Kutralam, which I have never been to. So if Maya could help us understand a little bit more about that location, that'd be wonderful. Sure, um, Kutralam is in, the southern part of India. It's in the hills and it's known as the home of the great Saint Augustia. So it's still, a lot of it's still intact as a jungle and it has these beautiful waterfalls and ponds and lakes. And the water as it goes over these sacred Siddha herbs, all these divine herbs that were brought from heaven by the great saints, these ponds accumulate and I'm not sure exactly what's on the schedule. If you're going to be bathing in these sacred wells or yes, water. that's the that's the plan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a huge blessing. Not many people can do that. Um, especially if you're go the time of year you're going, the the rain will be there. Otherwise, if it's very dry, the waterfalls don't run as um, strongly. But it's it's the um, abode of the great saint Augustia. So like Vishwamitra, Agastya is called a, a Maharishi. He's one of the greatest of all the Siddhas and saints. Uh, in historical times, um, when Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati were getting married in Kailash, which is um, represented by the north of India in that Kailash mountain, uh, Augustia was in attendance and Augustia had gained so much power that many people considered him to be the equivalent of Lord Shiva. So when he came to attend their wedding, the earth started to tilt. And so Lord Shiva was like, um, you know, out of compassion for the earth, would you mind going to the south 
and you know you, you have my blessings <laughs> so Augustia traveled from the north of the Himalayas all the way down to the south of India he's also the founder of the Tamil language so a lot of what he knows is the secret secret power of the phonemes he's the author of a lot of the phonemes that govern our earth plane and um, in ancient times off the southern tip of India there was another land you can call it Lemuria or uh, there was another um, landmass though that has since been submerged in the ocean and that landmass um, was all the great siddhas and saints in the jungles and the caves and the mountains and um, what's pretty what pretty much what's left though is is this area called Kurchalam it's just a little bit north of the tip of India called Kanyakumari but it, it's really magical and mystical and again the journey there it, it's not going to be um, completely easy to get to but it's divine and the waters have this miraculous power and every time you go there you just feel like right behind you there's some siddha or saint you can start to feel it it crackles with that energy so i would not miss that once in a lifetime um chance to bathe in these sin, sin dissolving wells because they're so energized for um better health removing negativity. This is all through the auric body. So it just erases all these things in your energetic body that have been damaged or accumulated over your lifetime. These sin dissolving waterfalls and wells are not to be missed. Great, thank you. Yeah, I haven't, and we've tried to go there actually in the past and we weren't able to, there was like flooding or something like that. So I'm pretty excited about this. Also. Then speaking of Kani Kumari, we will be going down to um, the further tip of India, where we will go to the Dattatreya temple, which Maya, you were also at um, recently. And um, so this is where there's this beautiful, and Maya, you can probably have more information, but recently Dr. Pillai took a few people there on, on a very special day. It was that full moon in October where he had mentioned it was a special day for Dattatreya. And we went there and it was, uh, Dr. Fly said it was his rebirth was, uh, and, and energy of his, his, um, his, di his divine avatar, his divine incarnation. So we'll be at this very um, kind of, uh, not a lot of people go there, I believe. What, what else, do you have some, anything else to say about the Dr. Treya temple? I know you've been there a few times. Um, it's in a town called Suchindran and it's pretty strict. So, um, in that they're a little bit guarded about allowing just tourists in there. So we'll have to get some special permission and like men, you can't have your shirt on. And, but um, this temple is designed all backwards. It's a very mystical structure of a temple in itself. And Lord Dattatreya entered into a tree there. So his, his shrine is actually uh, right in front of a tree, which they've encased. But also there you have, um, a separate shrine for Vishnu, a separate shrine for Lord Shiva. And they don't have a separate shrine for Brahma, but he's considered inside that tree as well. And um, the other amazing thing there is this gigantic, massive, large Hanuman. And this Hanuman, uh, Dr. Ply has said, is also a form of Dr. Treya. It's a very rare form of a Trimurti Hanuman. And he's about maybe 40 feet tall. <laughs> he's so tall. And you go there and it's just like total access to the deities because they keep it extremely pristine, very pure, very guarded. And it's interesting in this temple because in a lot of temples you go to in India, the first deity you pray to is Ganesha. There's always a Ganesha right at the entrance, a Ganapati. And because he's, he's, a, he's a gatekeeper, he's a guardian deity. But in this temple, there's no Ganesha. You enter there, and the first one you pretty much come to is Lord Dattatreya's shrine, and then you go to the other shrines. But as you're exiting the temple, Ganesha is the last deity. So it's, it's a mystical tantric temple, and it's considered one of the preeminent um, birthplaces of Dattatreya as well, um, another incarnation of his. There's the saint who incarnates as Dattatreya, and then there's the Lord himself. So it's also considered a birthplace of Lord Dattacharya. So um, 
even to gain access as a Westerner, if you just go there, they probably wouldn't let you in. Yeah. So through Dr. Pillai and his arrangements, you'll you'll be able to have access to this temple. Yeah, and this the Murti, the statue there is so beautiful. It's not very large, the Dattatreya. When you but when you look at it, he's actually he has this gold plating on him with the three heads, and it was just it's just captivating. He's so magnificent. Yeah. And yeah. be there with Dr. Pillai is like radiates, yeah. Yeah unheard of. <laughs> so, um, and then since we'll be in Kanyu Kumari, there's a very uh, powerful goddess temple. Kanyu Kumari is the, um, the goddess. We hope that we'll have time. Uh, we never know what's going to happen on these trips, so it will change what will um, be redirected, but we hope we'll have time to go to her temple as well. She's very powerful. Um, Dr. Pillai, I was just talking to her, uh, talking about her, talking to her as well. Um, a couple weeks ago, uh, I just happened to be bringing him something and he mentioned her. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, we went to go see her, you know, on this other trip. And he's like, yeah. And he started talking about how, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Vivekananda. Vivekananda had gone um, to worship her. I'll be right back. I'll just get okay. a picture. Sure. Vivekananda had gone to worship um, Kanyu Kumari and spent, and there's actually down there, there's also what's called Vivekananda Rock, where he swam out to this rock and worshiped her. And um, she apparently, there's many different stories. Maya knows them better. She, Kanyu Kumari, stood on one foot on the rock, and there's this literally a footprint um, on the rock itself. And that's where you go to view her foot and on the rock, and then in um, his shrine, and where he meditated for several days to, uh, and after that, he received the message that he, he was meant to bring the, um, his message to the U.S. and the Western world, and that's what Kanye Kumari gave him. Oh, I think you can see that, okay? Oh, yeah. She's she very is so sweet. The whole thing is like sweetness to like super sugary sweet temple ever. <laughs> Yeah. She's like and a 15-year-old girl who's not yet married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah she's um, known as the child goddess, right? So she's young. Uh, a little bit older, adolescent. Adolescent. Okay. Yeah. Kumari means, means virgin. She's mm -hmm. not yet married to Lord Shiva, but she is just like total charmer sweetness <laughs> <laughs> beautiful <laughs> so that's it folks so that's what the trip is um consisting of let me see if there is any questions so please post your questions in the chat it usually takes about a minute to get to me so in the there meantime was, go ahead yeah there was one thing i wanted to say about that vasavi temple mm -hmm. the one with the trimurti goddess we were there and i was traveling with another woman who was doing a business and at the end of the day, when she traveled to there and prayed for more money, she hit all new sales threshold that she's ever had. It was the number one biggest sales day she's ever had. And that was mm -hmm. just from that one temple visit. She contributes that to Vasavi. So these goddesses act very fast. Wow, well, that's incredible. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let's see, there's, I'm just posting, uh, I know it takes some time, so please post your questions in the chat. Um, and in the meantime, what I'll do is go through what's included. So I really, I told you before, everything is included from when you get to India. You have to make sure that you purchase your trip, your flight to either Chennai, the second trip you're flying in and out of Chennai, the first trip you're flying in and out of Hyderabad. If you're doing both trips, you're flying into Hyderabad and out of Chennai. Just be very careful about how you book your flight and all the information and the itinerary, well, all the information is on the sales page, which is on the viewing page that you are hopefully looking at right now. It says join Dr. Ply's birthday trip. And if you have any questions, please write to us before you book anything. If you're not sure exactly what time you should be um, booking your flights, what days to arrive and, and depart. So that's very important. Please make sure you have all your logistics in place, your visa, your passport, anything you may need. We can't tell you that about your country. You must research it and um, find out what you need. Every country's uh, every nationality's entry into India will be different. So please do that on your own and, and um, make sure that's taken care of. 
Then we have a couple um, payment options. So one is a payment plan where you can put down half of the payment now up until December 25th. So you don't have much time. You have about, what is it, nine, eight or nine days from today to place your, well, your payment, your first payment, which is half of the, the trip cost. The second half of that trip cost will be due on January 20th. Normally, we do not let you pay that late into January because we have fees to pay. We have to buy your ticket, your um, airfare. We have uh, your tickets internally, India. We have to we have to reserve and pay in advance all your hotel rooms. So we put a lot out, but because this trip was delayed because of the divine guidance from Dr. Pillai, um, we're extending as much as we possibly can in terms of making it as flexible and making as much opportunity for you as possible. So that's one option paying half now, half by January 20th. The second option is the um, option where you pay in full, but you receive a deeper discount. That is the early bird option. That early bird option expires on December 31st. So if you are interested in paying in full, and um, I personally suggest this because you're gonna save hundreds of dollars, literally $500 if you pay in advance um, or if you pay in full, um, for both trips, for example. So that's quite a bit that you'll be saving. Um, and that is only until December 31st. Again, we normally have more time. We normally promote this months ago, but we have a beautiful opportunity instead. So um, we're so blessed and we have plenty of time to make magic happen, right? <laughs> Ask the gods and goddesses to help. So that's all the logistics that I wanted to mention. And uh, I wanna see now if there are any questions that you have. Some people are asking about different currencies. Um, yeah, so if, if you're in India, your currency, your, the trip cost will show up in Indian rupees. There's not a pr different price um, for it. So what you see is what the trip cost is. Um, is there anywhere near the Saturn temple recommended for the Nadi readings? No, we will not be um, in that area. Uh, an indirect question, if you have, if you want to come on one of the trips or both and then also do a naughty remedy trip, that is totally possible. In fact, very recommended if you're already going to be in India and have the time, then you just let us know, contact office at pilaicenter.com and we will arrange everything for you and tell you what the additional cost would be and tell you how it would work into your schedule. It would be either before or after the trip, it cannot be combined. As you saw in the itinerary, we are going, going, going. There's no room for you to go off on your own and do some side um, options. So it's either you're on these trips doing exactly what everyone else is doing or you're not. But you can add on the naughty trips either the before or after one of these trips. Let's see, any other questions? Day one is Hyderabad, someone is asking. And also uh, people often ask, well, can I come on a couple days here and there? No, you really can't. It's so much coordination for us to get everyone from place to place to place, to have one-offs of people coming in for a day or two. It's just not an option. Um, so you're either on a full trip or maybe another time. Yeah, and then once you pay for the trip, we will send you the exact itinerary. We do not release hotel names and things like that in advance um, for privacy reasons. But we do let you know where you need to arrive, by what time, um, and when you pay, of course, then you'll receive all of the details of every single place you'll be. This way you can also inform your family of um, your location. Let me see, any other questions? There's also, yeah, there's a packing list and all those details on like suggested packing list on the page. Um, it is suggested. So some people are asking about like dress code. Uh, you want to wear Indian clothes. So many times a lot of these temples are not open to Westerners because they there's an assumption that if you're a Westerner, you're here for tourist reasons, not for spiritual reasons. But of course, we're all here for spiritual reasons. And we wanna look the part as much as possible to blend in as much as we possibly can. Of course, you're not gonna blend in if you um, look very different from the locals. However, we do our best. And we also wanna honor the culture. Women, there are no dresses, there are no shorts. You're covering your legs entirely. Um, no tank tops. Um, at the very most you can do is a, 
is a sleeveless. Even then, it's recommended to have sleeves on any um, shirts that you wear. Uh, nothing form fitted. So it's best to purchase Indian clothes, the um, kind of those two piece uh, dress. And for men as well, same thing. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any other questions in the chat room. Oh, I'm sorry. Good question. Baba will not be on the trip, trip two. So trip, Baba will be on trip one and then he'll um, leave us and then we will take you on. Um, there'll be some Palai Center teachers who have been on trips many, many times to take you on to trip two. We will also have some meditations from Dr. Pillai that we'll be using during the seminars and um, chance that he gives us to do on this trip. He will also be calling in, I think, at least one time to trip two so that we receive his direct blessings and guidance. He's gui guiding the entire thing. Um, someone's asking, would trip two be, be yet as powerful? My first trip to India, I still, is, I still believe is one of the most powerful trips I've ever been on, and Dr. Pillai was not physically there. So I, I will... <laughs> He's, he transcends space and time. Now, yes, to be in his physical presence is amazing. There's, there's nothing that really compares to that. So if you can be on both trips, then please do that. If you wanna be on trip two, um, please understand, it'll also be very, very powerful. Dr. Pillai's energy goes with us. He transcends space and time. He will be blessing the entire thing. So um, it'll be extremely powerful. <laughs> Any other questions? I don't have the YouTube video up, so if there are any questions from YouTube, if our support staff can post them in my Skype or on the chat room, I can answer them there. I don't see any other questions. I think that's everything then. One last chance. I know there's a delay in our airing. If you have any other questions, contact office at palaicenter.com. You will also be connected to the local um, coordinator in Chennai, Maheshwari. She handles, she'll be handling a lot of your questions. And if you sign up, of course, you'll receive all of the documents that you need to prepare and, um, and join the trip. Okay, looks like there's no other questions. Um, <clears throat> On a personal note, uh, and I think Maya can attest to this, Maya spent a lot of time in India. India is such a transformational place. Just being here, there's, there's um, kind of layers of energy, energetic um, karma that can be released. So, and then specifically being here with Dr. Pillai, with Baba and walking through these Im immense powerful places is, is like, Transform it's transformation. I feel like every India trip I've taken with him, even without him, it's been like a pill that I, you know, something happens, there's always some shift and I go back, you know, to my home country different. Um, always something, even from the very first trip that I've been on. So you'll see the layers being peeled off and melted off during your, your time. All right, looks like that covers everything. Thank you, Maya, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all of your great information. You're so experienced in all of these locations. Oh, my pleasure. I look forward to meeting everyone when you come and we can journey on these places together. Yes, exactly. And thank you all for joining us, for walking, us, for walking with us through this, these amazing power spots. And I also hope that you'll be in India in January through February. So it's January 30th through February 9th, uh, 2019. Dr. Bly's 70th birthday. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Namaste. Thank you.